Well, it was the Brewster Whitecaps who were able to strike in the bottom of the first. However, the Bourne Braves were able to scatter two runs, and a big part of that was Jake Mangum, who sits to my right. Episode 19 of Tomahawk Talk. Coming at you, Michael Stern over there, Kyle Kirchville right here, and I'm Troy Lynch. Three hits on the night for you, Jake. You had three of the ten for the Bourne Braves. You had a part, you drove in a run, but you also scored a run had three hits out of four at-bats. What was clicking for you, and especially at the top of the order tonight? Oh, uh, well, you know, the only way I can score is you know, if I get knocked in by someone behind me. So, I mean, you know, at least and every time it's someone getting on for me or someone knocking me in. So, um, a lot of guys in the lineup tonight and, uh, saw the ball well and was able to barrel some stuff up. The ball traveled well. Jake, a lot of guys here in the camp really have a bit of an adjustment period when they get started here. You really haven't needed that adjustment period. You've sort of hopped on board from day one. What's been the key to that? Uh, a lot of guys just talking to each other and you know, filling me in. Uh, whenever I got here, they were already, you know, nine, ten years in. So when I got here, all the guys, all you know, they, they've been through it you know, a week or so of it. And uh, when I got here, they, they told me what to look forward to and, you know, look ahead to. And it's been fun. All four of your at bats tonight against one of your teammates from home and Connor Pilkington. Anything extra special about getting to face him? And you've certainly got the bragging rights after going three for four. Uh, Con Connor made some great pitches all night. Now uh, he's 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 going to be a big, big, big part for us next year in the spring if we're going to make it anywhere. Uh, Connor Connor's a heck of a pitcher, and he's got a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff backing him up with all the stuff. Uh, his fastball's got life, and his all speeds, you know, got a lot of movement. And, He's just been a great pitcher for us all year, and I know he's going to do the same thing for us next year. But you were able to get a couple hits off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, you, you win some, you lose some, especially in baseball. <laughs> Jake, you're on a nine-game hit streak. Is that something you kind of keep track of and going into every at-bat, it sits in your mind maybe? Um, ab absolutely not. <laughs> last thing you need to get worry about in baseball is numbers because numbers lie a lot in baseball. But, uh, you know, what I did today doesn't matter. You know, what we did today doesn't matter. You know, it's all about tomorrow now. You know, if I go 0 for today or 5 for 5 today, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, Doug you know, came in and had a great relief performance. And, uh, and I know he's thinking the same way, that tomorrow if he gets on the mound, he's got to do the same thing. You know, Raby, just absolute great start. You know, it, it, it's, it's really easy to win when you only give up one run. Uh, especially eight shutout innings. So uh, it, it was a good day for everybody. Well, the numbers have definitely lied for the Braves in the past, but not for Jake Mangum, who went three for four with an RBI and a run. A handshake for you, Jake. Congratulations <laughs> on a great game. And uh, we'll be right back on Tomahawk Talk. This is Dave McKinnon from the University of Hartford, and you're watching Tomahawk Talk. So a low scoring game, but a high amount of players of the game, possibly, we're not sure. That's why we're here to f figure that out. Kyle, let's go to you first for your player of the game. Well, I took the Cornhusker on the mound last night. I'm going to take the Cornhusker on the mound tonight. Chad Lutzman, a fantastic outing, was able to come in in the eighth inning, get the big out, and to maintain the Braves one run lead. Got to give to him the bullpen. His, uh, like, it's been up and down over the course of the last uh, few weeks, but tonight it was definitely up, and Lutzman was a huge part of that. Got to give it to him. All right, Michael? Well, I'll go with the guy we just talked to, Jake Mangum. Another terrific night at the top of the order. Three hits for him. He also does a nice job in center field, made a nice catch deep against the fence. He did a great job tonight. Also, you mentioned Lindsman. I'll throw out an honorable mention, if you will, to the rest of that Braves bullpen. Doug Norman picked up the win, pitched pretty well in relief, and Andrew Wands quickly emerging as the closer for this board Braves team gets another save. My player of the game is going to have to be Patrick <laughs> Gravy. Sorry for the suspense. I, I wanted to add some Go extra ahead. effect Go to ahead. that, but Patrick Gravy did a fantastic good job. Once again, five innings. He gave up six hits, only one run, struck out five batters, but the number I really like to point out, zero walks. He had five walks against Brewster in his first start of the Cape Cod Baseball League season. Two walks, the next start against the Falmouth Commodores, and zero tonight. So overall, a lot of improvement is coming from the Vanderbilt Commodore, but the Bourne Braves take the win tonight. Two to one, the final score here from Bruce, Brewster, Massachusetts. That's going to conclude episode 19 of Tomahawk Talk. For Michael Stern, Kyle Kirchival, I'm Troy Lynch. Bourne Braves will be back at home tomorrow night going up against the Wareham Gateman, and they improve to 11, 7, and 1. We'll swing you then.